So I've gotten a few questions on some recent videos about how to draw with an isograph, um, what paper to use, what ink that you're supposed to use for these pens, and just some other general questions. So let's talk about that. <laughs> They come in di many different sizes, and the three that I have here are the 0.35, the 0.25, and the 0.18. Now, these come in different um, brands. You can get off brands of these, or you can get the name brand. Uh, the name brand I have is Rotring, and the reason I went with this pen is because it's a well known brand. Um, it works great. You've got a lift. A lot of different sizes for the pins and they're very reliable and last a long time um, I'll leave a link in the description of this video down below so you can find that um, but these pins they are very durable compared to the off-brand cheaper ones so I advise it's best to get these ones here and how these pins work is that refill them right here this little reservoir and the ink that you can get is an isograph ink I'll leave a link in the description of the video so you can find that as well but the pens are usually like around twenty five dollars to maybe forty but you can get the entire um, set of them for cheaper for example you can get a set of like four for maybe sixty five dollars and if you plan on drawing with these a lot and doing a lot of realistic drawings and you know drawing for the long term then these are going to be very beneficial beneficial for you now the paper that you want to use for these pens you want to use very smooth paper and when I mean smooth I mean really really smooth and the reason being that um, these pens they have a very very um, small tip to them so when you're drawing you want to make sure that you're not pressing hard and because of this really small tip that these pins have on them as you can see here they can be fairly fragile even though they're durable um, and by that I mean they're fragile in terms of the physical pressure that you put on them so you don't want to put a lot of pressure because once you bend the tip of this pin it's completely ruined and if you try to take the nib out and straighten it, you're going to have issues with it. And then it's just not going to want to work. So make sure you're not pushing hard with these pens. And when you're drawing with this pen, you want to make sure that you're holding it at more of a vertical angle like this. So shake the pen up a little bit. Um, usually before you start drawing with them, you want to shake the pen so you can get the ink flowing some. So make sure you're holding the pen at a vertical angle like this. You can have it at a slight angle, but you don't want to go any more than, um, I would say, you know, if you ha have the pen straight up and down like this at a um, vertical angle, you don't want to go more than, I would say, 30 degrees or so um, off of being vertical. And the reason for that is because of the small nib. As you're pressing down on the paper, if you go at too much of an angle, you're going to be pushing on that nib and it's going to cause the end of that to bend. And so you want to make sure that you're drawing at more of a vertical angle like this. And this will give you better consistent lines. It will also allow the ink to flow properly to the tip of the nib of the pen so that when you're drawing, you can get even lines. And you can, you can draw it at a slight angle, but I wouldn't do much of an angle with it because of the um, small nib. Now, when I mean that these pens are durable by that is that um, because they're the nib and all that is metal, it's tougher than what you would get with um, you know, like with markers or a pencil or say other pens because they last for so long um, and plus they're refillable. And so as long as you take care of the pen and you're not pushing hard on it, 
you making sure that you clean the pen, and then it's going to last you a long time and you won't have any issues with it. And with these pens, make sure that the paper you're using is a high quality paper. You don't want to be using real cheap paper. And the reason for that is because if you're using cheap paper, and let's say I'm drawing my lines, and um, you notice that after a while you're having problems with the pen not wanting to write. And one of the reasons for that can be that the fibers of the paper, if you're using a very cheap um, paper that's not very good, or the paper is um, thin and soft, you can actually puncture into the paper on accident and cause some of the fibers of the paper to get stuck in the very tip of this pen. And when that happens, you're going to have a really hard time getting that out because it's going to get stuck in the tip of the pen, it's going to dry up, and then you're going to run into some really big problems. Because I had been asked um, recently about um, an issue that someone had with one of their pens because they said they were drawing with it. And no matter what they did, they could not get it to write. It would like you know, draw some, uh, but then it would just skip. For example, they'd be drawing a line like this, and then it would just skip, and they wouldn't get, you know, it wouldn't work right. Now, one of the pens that I had gotten before of these rotating isographs, um, I didn't look into the paper that I needed. I didn't look into it that much. And so when I first started drawing with it, I was using a, using a really cheap paper. And the fibers of the paper kept getting stuck into the pen, kept clogging it up. And eventually I had to just get rid of the pen because um, it wouldn't write. And then one day I accidentally pushed a little bit too hard and the tip of the pen bent some. And then I tried to straighten it out, but it just wouldn't straighten back out again. Because you know, these pens, the tip of this, this is within no less than millimeters of accuracy that you have to have. And if you change that just slightly, then it's going to throw everything off. The ink isn't going to flow properly. The line width isn't going to be proper. Um, and the ink's going to dry up in it or it could leak too much. So that is one thing you want to be um, well aware of when you're drawing with these. And um, some other tips that I have would be when you are taking this apart to clean and uh, to put new ink in it or um, to get you know, dry ink out of the nib is to make sure that when you twist the little the reservoir onto it, don't twist it on too hard because you can break the seal here or crack this and then you know, the pen's no good, you can't use it, you have to buy another um, reservoir. I think you, can get, you might be able to get some new reservoirs online somewhere. I'm not sure. I have to look into that. If I find anything, I'll leave a link down below this video so you can find that. Um, second of all, is if you take this pen apart and you're cleaning it, make sure that this here, when you twist all the parts together, don't twist them on too tight. Because it's just like with if you're tightening anything else, like a bolt or a screw or something, you don't want to break the threads. You don't want to tighten it too much. It's kind of like if you're drilling a um, a, a screw or something into a wall, and you, you keep turning it. You're just tearing that up, and then it has nothing to grip onto. The same will happen if, if you do that with these pens. If you turn it too hard, you can crack the seal. You can cause the reservoir to split, and then um, your ink's going to just leak out. Or what could happen is it could split. And you might not have much ink leak out, but it could just dry out, and then you're stuck with trying to clean this, which can be pretty difficult. And uh, another tip would be tip would be to never take the nib out. Um, and I'll repeat it again because I already covered it earlier: is don't ever take the nib out because it's very hard to get it inside, back into that tiny little slot that it goes back into, and so. Um, yeah, that's definitely not something I want to do because I had an issue with a pen that, you know, the first one I told you about where the fibers were getting stuck into it. I had taken the pen apart and um, what had caused it to bend more was that I had taken the nib out, I tried to put it back in, and it, I couldn't get it back into the little slot. 
And by repeatedly trying to do so, I bent the nib some, and then it just didn't write properly after that. And so make sure you don't take the nib out of it. When you're cleaning it, you can take it apart, but just leave the nib in there. Don't, don't mess with that. Just clean the rest of it. And when you're cleaning these, you want to make sure that you're using a um, proper solution for cleaning them. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of the video down below so you can find that as well. And make sure you're using that for cleaning these pens. Um, and do not use um, rubbing alcohol or nothing like that because what they put in rubbing alcohol now, um, they, they put stuff in it that if you put it on pens, what it does is it actually eats away at the plastic some because it's not like the standard kind because rubbing alcohol is something completely different. And so don't like stick it in rubbing alcohol or store it in rubbing alcohol overnight because that's just going to eat away at the seal. It's going to cause leaking and many other problems like that. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> just don't ever do that. And another tip would be is that if you're drawing with these, make sure you're being very careful with the smaller nib pens, um, like this 0.18. This is the smallest one I have because um, I've got the 0.35, the 0.25, and the 0.18. Now, the reason I don't go any smaller than this is because I find that if I go any smaller than 0.18, the lines are just so tiny that it just takes me too long to draw anything. And so these are the three sizes that I go with. These are the most popular sizes. The two most popular being the 0.35 and the 0.25. They go all the way down from uh, 0.1 and they go up to 1.0, I think. Um, I don't have any of those sizes. I never really use anything more than a 0.5 for most of my drawings anyways. But um, yeah, make sure that when you're using these smaller nib sizes that you're using a very smooth paper. And you want to have a really, really smooth paper because... The tiny nib at the end of this when you're drawing with it if it's not smooth you're not going to get a line now i'll get started it's either i need to get the ink flowing or this paper probably isn't smooth enough one of the two but um i think i just gotta get the ink flowing but uh yeah this paper here is a, a really really smooth um cardstock now even though this is a really smooth cardstock it probably isn't quite smooth enough for this pen. Um, might be part of the reason why I'm having trouble getting this one right. Probably need to uh, clean into that one. But anyways, I'm determined to get this to work. <laughs> but uh, anyway, just make, your, make sure you're using a um, very smooth paper for the smaller nib pens. And when you're drawing with these smaller nibbed of pens, try to uh, always draw vertically with it. And you shouldn't have an issue um, drawing with it. As you can see there, this really fine tip, uh, tipped isograph doesn't really work that great on this paper because it's not quite smooth enough. Um, and I probably have to clean it here soon. So the 0.25 is just slightly larger than the 0.18, but it's not that big of a difference. Um, it's more of a um, step between the 0.35 and the 0.18 because um, anything smaller than the 0.18 is just um, too small. And like I said, it just takes forever to draw anything. So yeah, these two here, I've got to clean the ends of them. So that's part of the reason why they're not writing right now. And I've been using this one mostly, so I don't have any issue with this one writing at all. It just uh, goes right on the paper. And one thing I will mention is that the larger nibbed pens here, um, it's easier to get the ink flowing because of the larger nib at the end of it. The smaller ones do get clogged um, more often and because they do have smaller nibs. 
So if you're wanting to draw really detailed, try and go with um, a small nib, but don't go too small. Because these, the size of these are actually way smaller than what you'll get with a micron or other pens. Um, because other pens might say 0.5, um, whereas no, a 0.1 on this would be equivalent to like a, a 0.5 in most pens. Um, well, maybe not quite a, a 1.0. Um, compared to a 0.5, but maybe I would say, say for example, you have a pen, you know, your standard, any other any other pen, a, a ballpoint pen, a gel pen or something, and let's say it's a, um, uh, a 0.2. Now, this 0.35 is pretty much equal to like a 0.2, and that's because it's always a consistent line because they're so accurate. Whereas with other pens, you get a slight feathering. Um, there's not as much um, precision in the pen as these pens here. These have been around for quite a while. A lot of people that use these, um, they're architects, and um, they use it for drafting and designing stuff. So that's a uh, pretty good use for them, um, especially because of the fact that you can you know, draw such perfect lines um, all the time. Now, another thing with these that I want to mention is make sure you're always using a a good ink, a name brand ink. Um, I use the Rotring Isograph ink. I'll leave a link in the description below the video for that. And that's just the ink that I use. Um, and the reason being that with other inks that are off-brand, the problem you're going to run into with a lot of those is that they they might they might clog up your pen, they might dry out fast, they might not be as you know fade proof or archival as um what they say. So that's one problem you'll have because like say you buy a pen right like a Rotring Isograph. The pens, the set of the pens, forty dollars. They use a range between twenty to forty dollars. Let's say you buy a pen, the pen's forty dollars, and you think that you'll save, you know, ten dollars by getting um, cheaper ink. Let's say the ink is normally ten dollars a bottle, and let's say you want to get uh, two bottles of ink, and the off brand is five dollars, half price. So you save ten dollars. Well, sure you save ten dollars, but the problem is that it's a cheap ink, and if you mess up the pen, then you're out forty dollars. So you save ten, but you lost forty. So then you lose thirty overall. So you're not actually saving anything. And if you have a bunch of cheap inks, and let's say you have all of your pens filled with cheap ink, and then they all get ruined then you're out a lot more money. Now, if you bought these individually, that could range anywhere between $90 to $120. That's if you paid $40 for all of them. But you can get the entire set, which I would advise if you're going to buy multiple pens. Um, you can get the whole set. I'll leave a link in the description of the video for that as well. But um, if you fill all of your pens with that cheap ink, and then you start drawing... And you realize, hey, this pen isn't working, it's not writing, and it's clogged up, and you try to fix it, and then by then it's so messed up that you have to get rid of the pen. Here you're looking at being out, you know, up to $100 um, in isographs. And so, yeah, that don't do that. Just get some good ink so you don't have to worry about it. And um, that'll prevent you from having any issues at all. Also, I will say that uh, these pens... The difference between the isographs and the rapidographs is that these isographs here, they're refillable. Rapidographs have cartridges that you use um, and then just replace them. They're more convenient, but I prefer the isographs because I can get more ink. I can um, also get... Um, <laughs>
I can also control how much ink goes into it. So let's say I want to put a little bit of ink in this pen and you know I want to fill it to um, let's say not even a quarter of the way. Let's say I only want it to fill it to about you know right about there. That's it. Now I can do that and when it's out I'll be fine. Whereas if you use a cartridge if you don't use the whole cartridge then you know, it just dries out. You can't just use a little bit of it and that's it. So if you want to just use a little bit of ink and you're taking it somewhere with you and um, you want to use all the ink and not waste any, just fill it up slightly. Use all the ink and then clean it out and then refill it again. Um, that's actually one thing I recommend a lot of people to do is um, if you have a bunch of different drawing supplies, let's say you have um, your isographs and you've got, you know, sharpies and gel pens and everything just fill the pen a little bit maybe a quarter of the way if that use the ink up clean it and then refill it a quarter of the way and the reason for that is it keeps the ink from drying out um and it also prevents you from let's say you're not drawing for a while let's say you spend a, a couple of months or maybe a year that you don't draw with the pen now, that's less ink that's going to be in there that's going to be dry that's going to ca cause problems for you. So it's going to be easier to clean, and it's going to prevent you from damaging the pen. Uh, so yeah, don't fill it up completely unless you plan on using this as your only pen. Now, I draw with these, I'd say, every other day. I kind of switch between using Sharpies and um, the painting and doing other things and then using these so I feel these you know a quarter of the way and I'm fine um, so yeah if if this is the only pen you're drawing with then sure you can fill it all the way um, I'd, I mean I'd, I'd recommend halfway because the reason is that um, it prevents you from having the end clog up too much so I'd fill it halfway if you, if you use them every day fill them halfway wait till the ink runs out and then clean them um, it'll make the cleaning easier and the process will go, th go by a lot faster than if you, uh, you know, only clean them once in a long time because you have to use up so much ink. So, yeah. Um, now these pens, they come in lots of sizes. Um, they're refillable. They, uh, they're even colored at the end here. They have different colors in the end so they're easier to, you know, see the different sizes. They've got the different um, numbers on the end of it, so there's that. And you know, I really like these pens. You have, to, you have to be delicate with them. They're a very precise drawing instrument, and they're great for anybody that wants to draw something very detailed. Um, I wouldn't say they're really great for sketching because you can't, you don't want to move fast with these pens. These are more of a delicate, precise pen. That are slower moving. If you want to do something very detailed and um, with very thin lines, then these would be great for you. Now, if you're wanting to sketch or something like that, I would use a um, ballpoint pen or you know a pencil or any other pen. You don't want to use these because they're ex pretty expensive compared to most other pens and everything. So, um, yeah, you don't want to try and sketch fast with these. It, it would not work, especially if you're using you know, like rough paper or something. Um, so make sure you're using very smooth paper. I'll leave a link in the description of the video below of what papers to use. Um, you can check that out. And uh, yeah, just make sure you're using really smooth paper and you should be fine. So smooth paper, um, fill it no more than halfway. I recommend most people just fill it a quarter way. And my third tip would be to um, never remove the nib if you, when you're cleaning it. So, and my fourth tip would be to never twist the parts on too tightly because you can crack things. Um, make sure you're using the name brand Rotring ink or good ink like that. Um, I haven't used any other inks. I've just been using the Rotring um, and I'm going to stick with that. And another tip would be to make sure that when you're drawing with it, don't use it at too much of an angle and also don't use too much pressure. Make sure that the paper you're using is very smooth. And um, if you want your drawings to last a long time, use uh, paper that's archival that won't fade. Um, because if 
you use these pens, which has good, pretty good ink, on cheap paper, then you're going to get a lot of feathering. So yeah, that's not going to work very well. Also, um, I wanted to mention is that for these pens, the ink, do not use fountain pen ink in these. You have to use the isograph ink. And that is because the ink in these pens that you get, such as the isograph ink, is a lot thicker than the fountain pen ink. The fountain pen ink is a lot thinner. So if you try to use fountain pen ink in here, it's going to dry out really fast. And the other problem you're going to have is leaking. And with the thinner ink, it's going to flow to the tip of the pen really fast. So let's say, for example, I'm doing a drawing. And you know, with this ink, you know, it's fine. There's no issue. I am, uh, I'm getting consistent lines. And I'm not having a problem. But if I was to put fountain pen ink in this, one problem you'd run into is that the ink is going to come out too fast because it's a thinner ink. Another problem you're going to have is that um, fountain pen ink, um, depending on the kind you have, might be a wetter ink or a drier ink. And what that is, a wet ink or a dry ink, is the thickness of the ink. So let's say you get it no, a standard fountain pen ink, and it's kind of between wet and dry. And um, you've never had any issues with your Rochinary Isograph because you put that in there. Well, eventually you're going to because if you keep using that, um, and you got to keep cleaning it, and you're cleaning the pen in a very rough way to where you got to let it set in you know, a solution for a very long time, and um, you're going to end up just damaging the pen. And um, so... Yeah, don't don't use fountain pen ink, especially um, if you make the mistake of using a very like wet, um, very thin fluid fountain pen ink, and then it's going to be leaking all over the place. Um, I'd be surprised if you can even draw very well if you're using um, very wet uh, fountain pen ink. So yeah, that that would not turn out very well. And uh, also make sure when you're done using these, always put the cap back on and when you're done store them flat on the side don't store them like this or upside down if you store them uh, like this a lot of times the ink can all get to the bottom and um, it will uh, just like all the ink will be on the on the bottom part of it so then you could have leaking or something maybe if you don't have something twisted on all the way or all the ink can go to the end of it and it'll could cause drying out and um, so don't store it that way also make sure you're not storing it the other other direction such as upside down and the reason for that is because when you store it upside down that little nib that's in the inside of it falls down and then that exposes a spot to where air can get in so let's say you have your pen and you're storing it upside down like this and you forget to put the cap on or something so you have a little storage station for it forget to put the cap on and then you store it that way and then the ink dries out so make sure you're putting your cap back on um, you can't do it do what you can with other pens that you can with these like ballpoint pens you can leave the cap off of it for I don't know indefinitely or years even and you'll be perfectly fine with it so uh, yeah make sure you're putting the cap back on it and you won't have any issues with the uh, pen drying out. Now when you're drawing with these pens, make sure that you're drawing with your wrist more than anything. Because if you try to draw um, like you would with another pen, let's say you have uh, get my fine liner. Like let's say you have a fine liner, right? Now with the fine liner, you can draw with your wrist. You can draw with just the tip of your fingers or you can draw with your whole arm and the reason you're able to do that is because you know it's a cheaper pen it's not as big of an issue if you damage it you can easily replace it buy a new one um, you know, the tip of it eventually wears out anyways so you can do that um, you do it with ballpoint pens or gel pen that won't be an issue but with these pens you don't want to draw with your wrist or with your arm and the reason is because um, for a lot of people especially beginners they have a hard time drawing um, with 
their whole arm or their shoulder. Um, because most people start out being able to draw, you know, with the tips of their fingers or the wrist. Now, I recommend if you're drawing with these to just stick with that. And the reason for that is because the the larger of an error you have to move your hand across the paper, the more likely you are to, to damage the tip of the pen if you're a beginner, um, which takes a lot more hand control. And these pens are usually just made for... Um, mostly for details and very precise lines so if you're you know, drawing really fast you're going to damage the pen and you don't want to do those big arm movements you want to keep things you know just detailed and small which is what most of these pen sizes are for anyways um so if you're wanting to use you know, a gigantic like 1.2 or something pen then um Sure, you can move more, you could use your wrist mostly, but when I'm using these pens, I mostly just use the tip of my finger and a little bit of my wrist, and that prevents me from uh, losing control of the pen and actually pushing too hard, because that expressive um, look that you get with other drawings is because of uh, holding the pen at the back and then moving really fast. Um, one thing that works great with is like graphite or charcoal, but that's because it's meant to wear down. This isn't meant to wear down, it's meant to stay at this, the same, same size. You're not supposed to bend the nib or anything like you do with um, uh, Sharpie markers. Although I do wish Sharpie markers lasted longer. Um, I've had time for the tips of them actually wear out a little bit faster than uh, before the ink runs out. But anyways... Nonetheless, um, about these, um, yeah, just make sure that you're not holding it at the back end of the pen like this. Make sure you're holding the pen where you're supposed to. There's little grooves on the pen here um, near the numbers, and just hold your hold your fingers in that spot, and you should be fine. And um, make sure you're holding it more vertical, holding it kind of in that area, and you should be good. Now, when you're holding it, you notice how if I hold it like this, it's you can't really, you know, you can't get your line on it. It's kind of uncomfortable. So what I do is I hold, I I turn instead of holding like this, I'll turn my finger this this finger here. I'll put it over the pen some. I'll turn the pen like that, as you can see here. It's a good enough example. So instead of, instead of holding the pen like this, I'm holding it like that. You see? So then it allows you to, your hand's more relaxed in this position than if you're this because your fingers are all cramped up and you're not, you're not relaxed. When you're drawing with this, you want to um, relax but also be very conscious and in control of the lines that you're making. So... When you're doing this, um, just relax, relax your hands some, but make sure you have control, but not too much control, like you're know, squeezing the pen, you don't want to try and break it, because when you're squeezing the pen really hard like that, it's hard to get a sense of how much pressure you're putting on the paper. Um, and you can tell that when you're drawing with graphite or if you're trying to draw with charcoal, if you or with any other pen, if you squeeze the pen really hard, your muscles are so focused on that, and your hand almost kind of goes numb if you're like squeezing the pen too hard. Well, obviously, then you're uh, might want to relearn how to uh, properly hold a pen or to grip a pen. But anyways, um, if you're gripping the pen like you would with other pens, and you're giving a firm grip to it like you would with a um, graphite pencil when you're drawing, then you're not going to be able to focus as well on relaxing your hand and focusing on being gentle with the pen, making more consistent lines. So if I squeeze the pen really hard like this, sure, sure I can get details, you know, but I can't move the pen as far, you see. And also, I can't really hold it vertically very well. So you want to relax your fingers, hold it more vertically, make sure this kind of relax everything in your arm from your shoulder all the way down to your hand and then to add just a little bit of grip to your finger for control just like that 
So when you're drawing with it, you don't need to press at all. You want the pen to just barely come into contact with the paper. And as soon as it does, then you get your line. You don't have to press like you do with other pens. Um, so that's what allows this pen to last so long is because the tip of it just doesn't just wear out. Um, and that's another reason why you want to make sure that you're using really smooth paper. Um, if you're using really rough paper, it's going to damage the nib and wear it out. I'm pretty sure you would bend the nib of the pen far sooner than what you would um, actually wear the nib out. I would say if you're using like you no know, really rough um, paper, like paper for um, uh, let's say chalk or something like that, a more pastel. I'm pretty sure within a day or maybe a week at most, if you're lucky, the the nib of the pen would be just damaged beyond repair, and you would be able to use it. So yeah, just um. Make sure you're relaxed, calm, and uh, make sure you're not gripping the pen too hard, and just have fun with it. Um, do a lot of things with this pen that you can't do with other pens um, because of their limitations, and these may cost more, and they're more delicate, but I like them because I get a really dark dark ink and I could choose different colors and they're refillable um, they've got many different nib sizes and uh, the ink in this is a lot darker than what you'll see in many other pens a lot of other pens that I've come across um, even microns they're not quite as dark as this so you're going to get a very dark line so let's say you have a piece of artwork that you want to scan and um, you notice that the scans, the ink isn't that dark. So then you gotta go in and do all this editing. Now if you're using um, this ink, you won't have that problem. The ink is gonna just be really dark and you're not gonna have to go in and do all the editing. So that is another benefit of it. So um, this is a cut here. I'm gonna go to another scene right after this and for a moment I gotta think about what I'm gonna talk about first and then we'll go from there. So give me about 15 seconds. So what size do I recommend most people start out with? Um, you know, of all the different sizes that Rotring has, you know, all the way down from 0.1 to 1.2 and so on. Um, the, the size I recommend for most people to use would be the 0.35 and that's because it's a thin line to where you can draw detailed but it's also not um, so bold that um, you can't draw details and the third being that it's bold enough to where um, as a beginner it's not going to be um, as likely, likely for you to damage the nib but as long as you're following the things that I told you such as you know, being gentle with the pen not pressing hard um, using the proper ink, using roaching isograph ink, not using fountain pink or anything. Um, and make sure that you're also using um, also making sure that you're using a, a very smooth paper and not pressing hard on the pen, holding it more vertical. If you follow all these things, you're not going to have much of a problem. Um, but if you're still kind of unsure and you're a beginner and let's say you don't have much experience with other pens either at all then what you can do is just start out with the 0.5 um, I would start out the 0.5 if you're a complete beginner and um, practice drawing with that and then move down to the 0.35 um, and that's just so that you get better with your hand control and you don't have um, any problems with you know, being afraid to draw with it, um, which is understandable when you first start because it um, looks like a completely different tool than what a lot of other pens um, look like. But, uh, yeah, they're great pens, and I like how they work. Um, refillable, durable, and all that. So, yeah. I love them, that's for sure. Um, especially the consistent lines, uh, the dark ink and um, 
how the lines always consistent. I don't get you know wide lines and then thin lines. I don't have any of those problems. So yeah, they're they're pretty good. And uh, if you have any questions about this, if you have any suggestions about um, anything like me to talk about that I might have forgot to cover in this video, or something that you want me to cover in a future video about roaching isographs, um, anything, um, or even something about uh, another art um, item that you want me to talk about, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. But for now, I'm going to take some of these pins and I'm going to go work on some doodles and see what I can end up making. So I'll see you around and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And you have a good day. Thank you.